Hi, Steve. Hey, Jim. So in preparing for the uh, main topic of today's episode, I can't help but think of this Pretender song. Oh, what song's that? Middle of the Road. That's where you'll find me. And welcome to Two Guys Talking About Records, the, the, the podcast where two guys just sit there and talk about records. And if you want anything else, you just might as well forget it because it's not going to happen. We just, we know records. and We do. Uh, yes, that's all. I am Steve. I am a record collector. And my name's Jim, and I own a record store. So two unique perspectives, we'd like to think, at least, right? Yeah. I'd agree with We're know it alls. We're know it alls. Yes, exactly. So an interesting topic today. You know, we've talked a lot about discogs in past episodes mm -hmm. and how great of a tool it is and how frustrating it can be at times with what they do. But at its heart, well, the, the frustration is the uh, the marketplace mostly. Yeah. But at its heart, discogs is a database. And I'm not I'm not a huge numbers guy. My organizational skills are a little lax when it comes to personal stuff. But records, I like them organized. I don't know what the deal is. I think I'm very meticulous about that, and I know you are too. Exactly for the most part. Yeah, you know, even you know, after the flood, I had to put in an accounting for stuff lost with a yeah. law firm. Where'd I go? Discogs. Here's it's how much I lost. It's a great tool. But the cool thing about databases. And again, I need to put the disclaimer that I'm re I'm really, really not a numbers guy, but I can look at information and I can see the benefit of uh, of a database like Discogs and the electronic means with which you can reorganize it. You know, back in the olden days, we had spreadsheets printed out, and if you wanted to move it around, you had to cut it up or retape it or reprint it. But now it's a click of the mouse away, and you can look at a database in any numerous ways, depending upon the cells. And that's what we're going to talk about today is the uh, what 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 many in the vinyl community like to do. And I've seen a lot of videos on this, to you, Steve, and I think you have too. Let's look at my top records based on value. Mm -hmm. Because that's what's misleading. exciting. You know, you get kind it's, of yeah. thrilled with that. And, you know, to your point on database, so many of my videos, I just go in and I resort discogs in different ways to get information for my videos. And it I'm really good. does make it quick and easy to get what you need. So this week we're going to delve into that resorting to look at our most valuable records, but with an asterisk. How's yes. that? <laughs> All right. As this is the Vinyl Community Podcast, though, uh, we like to talk about pickups. We like to show off our records. Yes. I didn't have a very busy week. I had a frustrating week, but uh, how about you? Did you do, how'd you do this week? I, you know, it, it wasn't crazy, but there's some good stuff that came in. Uh, the first one, it's from a group called, um, oh man, it's, it's, it's an Italian group, the Gluts. Uh, Italian punk and uh, got it off Fuzz Club, the Gluts, and uh, it's called Bang. And this is a banger of an album. It just came out and it hits. It, so darn good. There's 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 some stuff where they sing in Italian. I mean, and, and uh, a little bit of the hives is what I got off some of the music, um, but uh, but other stuff too. This 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 was fantastic. I I, I absolutely loved it. The gluts, bang, um, very fun. Italian punk. You know, sometimes you just you look at your collection and go, you know, I'm missing Italian punk. What's going on with that? But uh, actually, I have some other Italian punks. So, hey, okay. Those are Italian. Italian. <laughs> yep. I uh, brought this, and it was a Spaceman 3 I was missing. And this is, um, oh, what is it? Uh, music for Taking Drugs 2. Uh, <laughs> actually, yeah, <laughs> exactly. How's that working? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I guess I can go find the drugs. So there's, there's some of the places I have to drive to. I'm sure it'd be easy to find. Yeah. Well, you know what, at Steve, if I can interrupt, at our age, it doesn't specify which kind of drugs. It very well very, could be. True. <laughs> very, well very be. good point. Some of the uh, over the counters or even uh, prescription. Uh, yeah. It's actually <laughs> called taking drugs to make music to take drugs to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, leave it to Spaceman 3. Uh, this is one of their later albums, but it's uh, I, you know some live sets on here. And you know, it's so so they have their 
Spaceman 3 hits, which no one else really would know. Uh, but, you know, they have some of the religious songs they were doing, like Amen, and then they got their own version of it, which is Hey Man, uh, because they really got into more spiritual, What one of their songwriters. But, uh, yeah, great stuff. I'm a big fan of Spaceman 3, so um, saw that was being reissued. Pick that up. Our friend Michael Christensen uh, sent me an album, and this is uh, Beach. It's called Beachwood Sparks Across the River of Stars. Ooh. And this is country psych, I guess would be best to explain it. Uh, kind of, you get a little birds type feel in there. It's, it's upbeat. I, I would say rather uplifting, uh, fun music to listen to, uh, and you know, great vocals um, are on here. Uh, Farmer Dave, who has his own group, uh, he's in charge. Or is it Father John? No, uh, Farmer, Far Farmer Dave, I believe. <laughs> now I can't remember. Uh, is is on here? I actually have it written here. Uh, the um, uh, Chris Robinson from the Black Crows produced it. Oh, cool. So, uh, yeah, very, very neat. The inner sleeve pops out like that. So, um, yeah, fun the stuff. Die, cut cover. die cuts yeah. are always fun. And the final one I bought, uh, just a reissue of Gish uh, cool. from Smashing Pumpkins. And, uh, yeah, I just, it's their first one, I believe. I, uh, I wanted it, hadn't had it. And actually, I was working on something on 1991. This came out in 1991. So I had to get credit at a record store. I bought a Talking Heads kind of early bootlegs and had just a terrible warp in it. So oh. they said, you can get something else. So I picked this up. And, of course, I forgot that I had already bought one of these on Discogs. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> so now you got a backup copy. I and you know what? The, the the thing is, with a lot of those Smashing Pumpkins reissues, mm -hmm. they're not cheap. They're, no. they're used box sets, or I mean, even even the single or double LPs are are up there in the forty to fifty dollar range for crying out loud. Yeah, yeah, they are. Uh, they really, it, it's kind of amazing at group, you know, how well it's done on the reissue market. So, yeah. With the so values. what about you? That's that's all I had, Jim. Uh, <laughs> how many weeks in a row is this now, Steve? Yeah. <laughs> They might be giants. Oh, you got to be running out eventually. <laughs> eventually, yeah. Now this one, this one's a, another fun one. It's called uh, "They Might Be Giants." Here come the one, two, threes, and this is part of their series of children's records. They uh, actually put out, uh, you know, just educational children's records. This one is a, uh, it's a, it's a gatefold, and it is on uh, colored vinyl. What do we got? Colored vinyl here. A nice little green and orange splatter, and these are these are fun, and you know. It's it's the completest in me, as we've talked about. I'm joking uh, about that a lot. But my kids, when they were young, used to listen to uh, They Might Be Giants, their kids' records. You know, this follows up earlier this year. They had a Here Come the ABCs. And then there is one more in the series called Here Come Science, which I would expect to come out at some point later this year because they're trying to get through all of these by the looks of it. But, you know, am I, I'll listen to it once and then I'll put it away in the event I ever have grandkids or at the event at some point in my life, I need to relearn the uh, one, two, threes and ABCs. <laughs> We're getting to that age. <laughs> Sometimes we need that reminder now. <laughs> it is, but it, it's fun. It's fun stuff. And they might be giants. If you listen to them enough, you're almost like this is, it's so close to just being kid friendly music. Mostly not all. Don't get me uh -huh. wrong. <laughs> some of it's a little dark. You just, despite their happy tone, some of it can get a little dark. But uh, they, they, they made that uh, move into kids' music for a little while back, uh, 20 some odd years ago, and it's just fun. And it's good to see them getting vinyl reissues. Yeah. Now, yep. the other thing, well, look, Steve, I got a, uh, a, a shipment from Discogs. Oh, wonderful. Let's, let's for open you. up and see, because a couple, you know, about a week or so ago, I ordered a copy of a Michigan band, Flint, a white label promo of Michigan's Flint. I could not be more excited. Let's open this up together, shall we? Yes. Let's see and what unboxing, we got. And unboxing. And oh wait, that's not a white label promo like advertised on Discogs. Wow. Bummer. So I'll, you know, Flint is a it's a cool group. Uh you want to talk about some remnants of 
of uh, of Grand Funk uh, in there as well. Um, Don Brewer, especially in through there. But um, uh, I don't know. I because I was looking for this specifically as a white label promo. Yeah. So now I gotta I'll deal with that. I'll keep this. Obviously, we'll sell it in the store. It'll it'll move in the store. But I wanted one of those for my. And we talked about the uh, <laughs> the niche collections last week. Yeah. How often can I get one that hits both Michigan and white label promos <laughs> all in one? Was was that seller a long uh, a seller that sold a lot or a newer one? Newer, but new enough, I think th that they should know better. They had a they had a, a decent rating. Normally, I try to stick with ratings if they're above ninety eight, and I think that this yeah. was right around ninety seven, ninety eight. Not too many negatives, but uh, a lot of neutrals and. I didn't see anything that would really, really flag as far as, oh, hey, they're the wrong. So I'll contact the guy. I'm not going to be a jerk about it, obviously, yeah. because we'll sell it. I'll just There's look for another one. Elsewhere. Yeah, the good, the good reviews were probably from his mother. He just <laughs> that's, that's, that's what mothers are for. Yes. They help us out. Mom, buy, so, buy some records. What's, uh, what's your mother's uh, username on Discogs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Too old. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, as always, look for the Spotify playlist. Uh, we will put up links that uh, have some of the songs from some of these albums that we're talking about. So you can listen in to see what it is Steve and I are jamming to. I'll even put a flint up there. And when I get a new one, I'll let you guys know. We'll do a follow up. But we'll also put up some musical clips and songs from the albums that we're talking about on today's episode. So check for that in the description. Uh, we put it up on our Facebook page. Just look for two guys talking about records, but it is in the YouTube description. And the link to the Spotify playlist is in the Spotify description as well. I don't know if that carries over to the Apple and stuff, but hey, before we get to that though, Steve, speaking of the Apple version of the podcast, I got a, a neat call the other day here at the store from a listener slash viewer to our podcast. And uh, he said, hey, I listen to you guys. And I'm moving, and I just wanted to know what were the boxes that Steve used when he moved. And I said, "Well, you're going to have to, you know, check with Steve specifically on that." I know we talked about them, but I don't have the link to them. Uh, but uh, thought we would not only answer that, but uh, just do a follow up on that if you wanted to share exactly what it is that you used in your move that worked rather successfully. Yeah. Question mark. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the the boxes that I use from Amazon, they're they're fairly expensive. Five boxes for fifty five dollars, as you can see here. The thing is, they are extremely sturdy. There was no crushing whatsoever. Um, they were uh, a little bit of room on top, so you know it 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 it, it just. They, they, they came through beautiful. The handles, it's double cardboard in there, so the handles don't rip off. And even afterwards, I have used these to store. I moved into a place that has less space. And so, you know, I have T-shirts in them. I have stuff um, it, up, way up in the garage that I've stored in these and put away. I They're, they're just they're perfect for so many different things. So it isn't like just for moving, you know, you can keep using them, which is what I did. I didn't throw away a single one of them because they're that good. And eventually I'm going to move when we buy our house. So, I, you know, sadly that's happening again, but um, yeah, they uh, just very easy. You don't use any tape, zero tapes involved yet. Everything is there's, double the cardboard on the bottom, double the cardboard on the side. So extremely sturdy. I, I could not have been happier. The price is a lot, though. If you have a huge record collection, that's going to be a major, um, you know, uh, a, a, a out, output of cash. For myself, I mix these up with the ones I could get, like, like from... Um, um, the U-Haul boxes. L L L yeah, from the regular moving boxes. But and those yeah, are they're, usually they're, about they're a buck, buck and a half a piece, I think. Yes, a lot, a lot cheaper, but also handles ripping off. Uh a little you can get a little more squished, not as sturdy as those. Okay. Well, I will try to remember to put a link to that in our descriptions as well. So anyone else. Is curious. I had a customer in during that phone call also, Steve, and he said, I couldn't help but overhearing. These are what I like to use. And uh, I can, we'll call these up real quick. These are even more expensive looking, well, more expensive in there too. I think it's 33 bucks 
for a set of two, but they'll hold a hundred records. But they look they look uh, rather. You could use them as storage units, not just moving as well, but they are stackable. Yeah. And you said they look like they were foldable as well, but that looks like it's a heavier material, cardboard, but some uh, fabric in there as well by the yeah. looks of it. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. So, yeah, that was another one that was kind of recommended, but uh, yeah, yours, uh, I'm glad it worked well. And uh, so that's what, uh, that's what you would recommend. I like the U-Haul ones, but... And I think I'd mentioned this before too. The U-Haul ones are nice and cheap when I buy a record collection, but it's just me moving them. So I know I've got to be gentle with the handles. I know I've got to go on the bottom sometime. But you know, if you're hiring movers or you're having somebody help, obviously you want all the all the extra protection you can get. Yep. Yes. Makes a big difference. Well, cool. Well, good luck with that move, sir. And thanks for thanks for yeah. checking in with us. That's it's right. never fun. No. No. As Steve will attest yes. again soon. <laughs> so, we'll, we'll give it the big S on socks. <laughs> there we go. So onward to today's main subject matter, and that being Discogs and how we look at our collections. And this kind of came about because, and I think you've probably seen some of these, Steve, too, as well, where we see some videos out there in the vinyl community and folks are saying, let me check this. You can look at Discogs. Let's look at my, my top valued albums you know what are what are what is my collection worth i'm going to click on discogs and holy cow this one's worth a lot of money and yeah. i get this from people well according to discogs this is worth this much i'm like mm -hmm. hold on there's three ways to look at that in discogs but as we mentioned seeing the database and the ability to rearrange it gives you a wealth of um, knowledge uh, just a diff a lot of great different ways to look at your collection and really kind of get a picture of what you've got yeah, I've I've done a few videos on you know the price of my collection and you know again using the Discogs database and yes yeah, some people they like to look at the high but that's no 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 one's going to do that unless it's autographed sealed or something like that uh, you know but it's it's exciting and they're excited and, wow look at that but uh, I think it all comes down to it's what it's what someone will pay for it and some of mine is like. Uh, will someone pay for that? Mm, it's going to be rough. <laughs> we'll get into we'll get into some of the particulars about how Discogs um, determines these prices. But when you go in, I'll show you here in a second on a screen, on a safe screen, what uh, what the different ways of looking at that are. Uh, but uh, as we get further into this, we talked about this. Well, let's show our most valuable records. Asterisk using the Discogs median price. Not that attractive looking high price, but the middle ground one, the middle of the road, as That's we right. said. Yeah. I, you know, even when, when I enter stuff into Discogs, Jim, if I open it, if it's brand new record, I open it, it goes to near mint because yep. to me, mint's sealed. And uh, and you don't even know if that's mint because you don't know what's going on inside of there, but it drops to near mint. If I buy used, VG plus, uh, unless it is so pristine, but I always bring it down. I'm just trying to get an honest for me, a look at my collection without, you know, uh, getting all excited because you can get, you know, album from the eighties. Wow. This looks great. But you know, it has been played unless you can really just tell, but you know, uh, yeah, I, it, it, but everyone great, great grading subjective, right? We we've, we've done a thing on grading. It's pure subjective. Uh, we all see things differently. Like a white label promo might be a colored label. And we just think, well, that must be a promo. Must be a promo. <laughs> now, that's, that's an opening episode. From, from my perspective here at the store too, when we get uh, used vinyl and I put it out for sale, I try to stick with that Discogs median, unless there's something, as you said, very special about it. Mm -hmm. Autograph copies, that doesn't do much for me because unless I have an actual certificate of authenticity, which could be just as easily forged as an autograph yeah. these days. For me, I don't think autographs make that much of a deal, but sealed records, maybe we can go above. But even then, you're talking 40, 50 year old sealed records, you're still running a risk of what is inside. Is it warped? Is there a a fold of the paper that uh, has been up against it for too long. You never know. But uh, the Discogs median, the, the middle of the road price, is what I shoot for when I'm pricing records. And obviously, if there's wear and tear in the cover, then it goes down below that. But I think that's a good starting point for looking at, uh, at our collections. Yeah. So before we dive into each of ours, Steve, let me show a... Um, 
this is the store's Discogs page. I, I can't call mine up. Let's see if we can put it on here. I can't call mine up as easily because I use a different browser. I use Safari for that. But mm -hmm. here's the stores um, and what I've recently had. I think I've mentioned before that we use this for our inventory system. So yeah. if you're going to be looking at your collection, obviously you've got to add things to your collection, which we did talk about before. And you got to be on the collection tab in Discogs. And from there, and I think we talked about this too, my default sort on the Discogs database is the date added. That way I can see what has been put in most recently for pricing or inventory purposes. So what you're looking at here is the 25 most recent ads to the, uh, the new vinyl that we sell here at the store. Now to get to this all important, uh, how do you look at this, Steve? Right up under the search collection bar, there is an estimated collection value. Yeah. And this is kind of, um, this gets down to the folder. I'm looking at just the new folder stuff in this case. So you get the high value and this is the, the value that folks get most excited about. So I've got 413 records cataloged in this folder. And Discog says the high value of these is $15,000, but new vinyl, maybe that might be the case, but the way that Discogs calculates these three figures, the low, the medium, and the high value of every collection, and the same when you get into here of, like to say this Ace Freely, the low, median, and high value of that are based on the last 10 online sales through the Discogs database. So what they do is they take, okay, if it's a very hot record, a new release that's selling you know, dozens and dozens of copies a week, they keep recycling that last 10 to give you these averages. So the lowest price versus of the last 10 averaged out to the median price to the highest price of the last 10. This gets a little weird. I remember when um, when Eddie Van Halen died and there was a massive resurgence in uh, the interest of Van Halen records and the prices of used Van Halen and even new really kind of went through the roof on there. That tremendously skewed this average value of a record going up because all of a sudden you had people paying 30 40 50 dollars for used copies in decent condition and when you got uh, the last 10 records of a van halen record selling for you know 40 and 50 dollars that skews the entire average up and it won't start coming back down until people start selling more in that 10 to 20 dollar range so that's how that works and that's how they calculate that and that's why I've had some folks before, Steve, say, I'm looking at my Discogs collection, collection value and it jumps from this to this in two days. It's like, yeah. well, somebody sold something really big somewhere along that line. So now the question comes down to how do you sort these things? Well, the database, like any other, you can sort it through uh, alphabet alphabetically by artist, alphabetically by title. Uh, the label, the year, the format, mostly LP in this case, but Discogs obviously has other formats. I don't know. I Once in a while, I'll go through artists, but Discogs, we've talked about the alphabetization of Discogs using first names. It's kind of annoying to me. But yeah. So, okay, then we get over to low, median, and high. And so if we're going to sort by the values, I'll start with the high value. And I'm just looking at 25 of them here to keep this going. And right off the bat, it starts with the lowest value of everything in that 400, but we're looking at the 25. So you have to click that high a second time to resort it from the highest value downward. So we see that, uh, you know, on my shelves right now, the highest value is a rush signals. And I forget, oh, I've got my prices in the notes there. Sorry. <laughs> so these are all new sealed. So we're going to be kind of on the high end for that retail value. But this is where Steve and I want to concentrate today is on the median. That medium value will, again, you click on that to resort the collection. And then you have to click on it a second time to resort it from the top down. It's just uh, you're switching the direction of that sort. And then this gives, uh, I think, a little more accurate of a picture. So now we've got the median value of things like Hotel California. That rush signals box dropped down one. Uh, this beautiful Pink Floyd has uh, moved up uh, a notch because of that medium value. And then, of course, then you can just sort by the lowest, the highest of the lowest values. Does that make sense? Yep. So to go through here and Rush comes back in there again and Pink Floyd jumps up a little bit. So that's kind of where we're looking at when uh, when we're talking about those median values. And I think you mentioned it too, that the medium price range of that average is probably the most realistic you're going to get with 
for the most part, records. Yeah, I def, def, definitely, because a low end, you know, yeah, it, it, there was a record I, I was looking at, one of my uh, most expensive records, and, you know, it's triple digit, but the low end was like 27 bucks. So you go in, and, and the whole thing was, well, this for, for historic reasons, this, this is a great album. It's not playable. But, you know, so $27, you can buy this record. Uh, you can't play it, uh, but historically, you just might like it. Ah. You've got it. And I've seen some, too, where they're, you get an album that's worth $60, $70, and then one sold for five, and then you go in and look at that sale, and it was the cover. We're just yeah. selling the cover for somebody that wants that. Yeah. So that averages into it, and that really skews the average in both directions. It does. You know, I, I, I go to a lot of record stores. I to a lot of record stores just checking them out and the ones that i will go back to are ones that you go when, when you take your records and come home and look at discogs and if they're charging higher you know quite a bit higher than a very vg plus in the middle i generally don't go back because they're overcharging in my in my personal eyes so they may have a lot of great stuff but i tend to look at the ones that really keep at that toward that medium discogs price some go a little bit below some go a little bit above that's kind of okay i feel that what i buy there will be a decent value because otherwise you don't know and so i i really use that to judge a lot of you know where i decide to shop and it's always as i mentioned it's always a sliding scale because it is so dependent and it's an automatic update of those last 10 items sold of that particular release. You know, and obviously, you know, we talk about that specific release. We look at something like this. You're really kind of dependent that the person who submitted the item to Discogs in the database to begin with and the person who's selling a copy of it is selling the right one. Yeah. Because obviously a, a white label promo is going to be worth a little bit more than a just a regular issue of that yeah and, and so it's and, really up to the seller to do that and it's it's on them to make sure that they're doing it correctly is that I've, I've had where the dead wax wasn't quite right you know they said here it is it's a certain pressing you're buying that pressing and yes pressing prices are a lot different on discogs uh again it's just you know whether it be a better pressing plant or just someone wanted it and says okay i'll pay that for that you know there's a lot of factors on there uh that that change it but you know as you're buying it you're kind of like okay this is the pressing i expect then you get another pressing go well that one's not worth nearly as much as a Mm -hmm. yep. It's kind of yeah. like going to a record show and thinking that you're picking up a cramps uh, first pressing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then <laughs> checking it. Yeah, yeah. Don't 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 check it. Just just get excited and buy it and wow. run out and you know jumping around. You know, woo 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 woo. And then you go home and go, oh well, that sucks. <laughs> so buyer beware. And like I said, I'll work out that. I'll work out that Flint one. We'll see what happens on that. I'll update you folks down the line. So all of that being said, how about we dive into our collections here? Steve? Yeah. Very good. Let's see what that database says. And as tempting as it is, as tempting as it is to say, let's, what's the most valuable, you know, album in your collection? It's worth four digits. Well, it's not. Yeah. So let's, let's, uh, let's do the median. And okay. uh, let's say we start at number 10. What do you All have right. for the, the 10th most valuable record in your collection? That is not the most valuable because we're looking at the median price. Jim Sullivan. Which I got some people gave, uh, I, 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 someone gave me a box of two records that had a lot of Mantovani, 1001 strings, that kind of crap. And this was in there. And I didn't even really know. I was doing a flip of it at home and going, well, a little out of crap. And everyone goes, that's an original Jim Sullivan in there. Uh, and this, this has a medium price of 233 uh, You know, it had a high end of 450 and a low of 100 But, uh, you know, this definitely is, is a medium price one. You know, he uh, put this out and then disappeared into the desert. So, um, yeah, uh, <laughs> just one of those, I got it for free. And one of those great surprises and you're like holy cow yeah yeah it, it is so yeah if whenever i sell that my my resale bill I, it'll be very profitable <laughs> coming in at number 10 for me is a van halen record they just reissued oh. this in a box set and it's therefore unlawful carnal knowledge uh this particular pressing is a 1991 us but it's a club version 
Columbia House. I don't think there was many others. Um, the median value, on, which really kicks this into gear, and it's giving me an interesting uh, an interesting picture of my collection. Yeah. The median value on this is 250, and it tops out at 400, wow. and the low end is at eight. So I think for number 10, a nice round mm -hmm. number of, of 250 is a, is a great starting point in that countdown from 10 to 1 with uh, an original Van Halen. Yeah, that is. Okay, number nine. Which Zamrock. Now, this oh. is not my favorite witch one. Here they got a little more danceable because dance music was taken over Africa. And so the Zamrock uh, was not as popular. You could see again, you look at the cover. It's, this is not in the greatest condition. But for Zamrock, it's it's what you get. And this this has a medium price of 242 low end of 32 this is the one where uh, they said hey it doesn't play but it's historical so or maybe hysterical if you buy it uh you know a high of 388 on it but uh yeah, yeah condition on a original zamrock because they're from in, in africa they're just they weren't collectors so to find this stuff is is a rarity but that's my number nine I think that's another example of um, digging a little bit deeper into your collection. You can look at those past 10 sales, by the way, by clicking on the sales record. And I think if if there's an item that is having a lot of activity, moving multiple copies of a title or a release, then you can see the fluidity of that price going up and down. I would imagine that that Zamrock being fairly rare, there's not a huge sales record. And there's a couple no. of mine. Yeah, there's a couple of mine that have very, very little sales, which then you can say this is a little bit more accurate representation of the pricing. Absolutely. And, you know, in any other kind of album, if it had like this, I mean, it's going to get a fair to pour on it. Yep. And it it crackles, it pops, it pl it plays through, though. Uh, but <laughs> it, but it did, based on what it is, then the value jumps up because of the yep. rarity. Okay, number nine for me is a uh, psych rock album from 1967. I've got a UK press of the band Art, A-R-T, and the album title is Supernatural Fairy Tales. This came through uh, in one of the, it was actually in the psych collection I got a few years ago. Wow. And I just thought, okay, this is interesting. I'll look at it. I played it and just was enamored with it. It's, it's, a, it's a great psych rock album. They do a cover of... Uh, um the uh, 10 years after uh you know, for what it's worth but the song in here is called what's that sound and it's just a very psych rock uh action on this now the median price on this that so we're going up from that 250 comes in at 257.91 i don't know why why can't we just round up people <laughs> <laughs> so 257 uh the the high end of this one tops out at 730 dollars and am. the low end is six dollars so you want to talk you want to talk about a wide range, yeah. uh, but this one, my, my copy is in very nice shape. I just, I, it's a great album. It probably will never go out on the floor. So I'm yeah. happy with it. Yeah. That's cool. Yep. Yeah. Number right. eight. Number eight. Oh, it's Sam Rock. Uh, okay, we got a uh, love and peace from Keith Mavuhu. Uh, label on there this again this 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 is fantastic guitar work it, it really is amazing what this guy can do with guitar i have a couple of his albums not as well known of a zamrock artist as some of the other ones especially ones i'll show but this i mean I, I was blown away by how cool this one sounded again the guitar work was was amazing on here it has a medium of 250 and uh you know a low of 122 and a high of uh, 760 so wow. again yeah very rare i get in you know and and to find it in great condition i don't even know how that happens uh but because people played the records but then they sat around and you know it, so, but yeah, one wonderful album, uh, another just Zamrock classic that if you collect it, me and the three other people, uh, you know, you want, you want to have in your collection. So if, hey, anybody, if you're going to collect Zamrock, you know, eventually when I sell, get a hold of me. <laughs> you know, 
Okay, number eight for me. I think you were jealous of this one a little bit. It's my copy of Big Star. And did, uh, did you you found it an original of this or? I I Not have yet. only the original vinyl. Uh, you know, okay. I, I I need that. If you want to give me that cover, I will have one then. So. <laughs> Oh, my cover even has a promotional sticker on it for wow. promotional use only, but it is not a promotional copy. It is just a just a regular label in there. So yeah, the the big star. You know what? I came to this group. And this the cover, by the way, has got some water damage. It's not it's not beautiful. And I came to Big Star fairly late. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I, you would think that I would be from being in radio would have been more attuned to this and. For some reason, these guys slipped under my radar until about five years ago. So this wow. is a 1972 press. So it's a first press. The median value on this comes in at 260, tops out at 434, and the low of about $70. So yeah, not, not that wide of a range, which shows that this is one that's holding its value really no matter what the condition. So it's kind of a good, I think it's a good thing. Yeah, that that is. And, you know, I, I'm 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 like you with I I actually bought a CD in the early '90s of Big Star because everyone was talking about it, and it, it didn't do anything for me, quite honestly. It wasn't until the odds that again I listened to him and go, wait a sec, okay, now I'm seeing what I'm missing, and yep. you know, I wound up in the in the teens. I found an original down in North Carolina, of all places. We were down there for a little vacation, and. Uh, and, and I had a chance for another one for Radio City, the second one. Kind of glad now I didn't buy it because I just would have lost that one also. So it yeah. worked out. <laughs> Be patient. One, yeah. one will roll through here someday and you'll see it in a video. Exactly. So number seven. All right. So this is a case where this would be closer. Whoa! It was near, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it just went down to VG+. UHQR Aqualung. And, oh wow! Uh, this beautiful, beautiful copy. I'm a huge Jeff Tall fan, so when this came out, I was buying some of these UHQR for a while. I have totally backed off because they, you know, well, I have a few of them. This is the most valuable one of them, and I just kind of found that do I need it on my personal system? I mean isn't making that my life that much happier. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, a good old G's fine. But uh, so, so, so this um, ha has a medium price of 271, a high of 429 and a low of 170. So you can see there's a wide range and, you know, that, and, and so this is a case of a brand new album been played once, twice at the most and then put away. So, you know, it's one where I would go above medium, yeah, obviously, to try to sell it. But, um, yeah, just a, oh, and see, a crease break. That's that's that, that's how much I've played it. You, know, <laughs> you it hear was, it opening for the third time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, I, yeah. It, it, but, you know, when we talked about these high-end records before, and for a while there, you know, I was kind of all, all in. And, and then it just, I'm spending a whole lot of money on one album when I could get uh, a variety of like the Glutz Bang. So, yes. uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. we're on number seven? Yep. Number seven. This was, I think we, we included this a little while ago. I picked this up not too far back. And this mm, is yeah. the Ran, uh, Randy Holden and Population. Uh, this is a 1970 press on Hobbit Records. Uh, Population 2 is the actual album title. Um, psych Rock, but... This, I think, really kind of ticks onto the hard rock side of things. We mm -hmm. talked about this when it was a recent ad for me. Very, in my mind at least, reminiscent of some early Sabbath in a lot of cases. And I think you'd mentioned, too, that this is highly sought after. Yeah. And I just kind of went, it was in that site collection. I went, oh, this looks kind of cool. And you're like, <gasps> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I was like, yes. Well, I like it enough to keep it in. Now, this one, this one boggle is one of those ones that we're starting to get into this odd territory. Median price on this comes in at $337. The low end of Randy Holden is $25. The highest that this has sold for in the past 10 sales is $1,500. Somebody paid for it. Now, that could have been sealed. 
Could have been an autograph for all we know. I didn't go in and look and see what that $1,500 one was. But again, you're getting that disparity. And I think that that mid range and probably even mid, if something like this were to go in the store, I don't think I could even put the 300 on it, even if it's in pristine condition. I mean, to sell locally at the least. It's still a good album. It's not going anywhere. It's staying with me. There's crazy collectors like, I don't know, in Colorado and stuff that <laughs> will go, uh, I'll take it. When when Dylan gets a Zamrock collection. Hello, Steve. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, you, you know, that thing, you know, that Randy Holden, you know, just a couple of years ago, it was really being reissued. And I always wondered, would that hurt that price? Would it drop down? But it, it seems to be staying strong and everything because, you know, sometimes these reissues can lower down the price because now those that have really wanted it, oh, I, hey, I'm happy with this. But, yep. I'm happy with a $30 reissue. Yeah. Yep. Okay, number six, and I bought this at my um, used to be local radio wasteland, and it was Alice in Chains. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, the limited edition double vinyl Alice in Chains jars, jars of fly and sap. So there's that, and uh, yeah, yeah, I've been trying, it's nice, you rarely see. The stuff from the 90s uh, on vinyl, original. It's such a rarity. So uh, you're going to pay for it if you see it, uh, definitely. And so they're, they're not cheap, but it's exciting to have. And this, this was really good, cool. You know, it has a medium price of $300. Um, high end was $499 and a low end of $125. Uh, and again, it's always interesting when you go in and you look at that low end to see why, you know, they, they explain it or, you know, or, or you look at what's for sale. I guess sometimes you see, well, we got this. It's super cheap. But uh, yeah, this this was a great find when you got that in. That was one of those where I'll, I'll take it. And Jim goes, it's a thousand dollars. I go, okay, yeah, I guess I'll buy it. <laughs> That's the other thing, too. If you look at the for sale, the what is for sale on some of these. Yeah. You've got some that are just off the charts, and there's they a reason they're not selling because I think that's unrealistic of a price to ask. Yeah, I, I think so. I just put it up there because there'll be some crazy person that's just go, Well, I really want it, I'll just buy it, and yeah, it will do it. And then, and, and, and you look at you know, some of these, you know, they're asking a lot, the condition's really bad, it, yep. it just doesn't match what you see in there. And then you have new sellers where you wonder, Are they? Is it legit? So yeah, yeah, again, it's 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 a whole gamble of discogs. It is. Number six for me is a band you're going to actually see twice in the top ten. Hmm. Michigan's oh. own MacArthur. Yeah, is popped up in here. So MacArthur too. The second we talked about this in the Michigan stuff last week, so I won't spend a whole heck of a lot of time mm -hmm. on this. But yeah, the MacArthur number six for me. MacArthur two originally released in 1982. This is that press. Median of 375, top end is 400. Again, I, I'm a retailer. You know, I sell stuff. I look at some of the prices people put. The high end of this sold at $444.44. <laughs> the low end was 211. But uh, yeah. median, I, I've sold some of these. In fact, I think I sold one to you uh, here in the store. I think that the price of this has jumped tremendously in the past couple of years. This used to be about 100, 120 dollar record now it's upwards into that three to four hundred dollar range median mm -hmm. yeah just it's the good way stuff from Michigan. Final is. yeah all right okay well, come down here's the the top five top five let's go time to go back to zamrock again okay <laughs> and so ricky il il iliganga and uh this is probably the greatest of to me of the zamrock guitarist this is shanty town boy in, in original uh you know the cover on this is actually not too bad considering ev ev everything uh, this isn't his best uh it's still very good it's a little later so again some of that really hard zamrock sounds are a little disappearing you know with the hard guitars and stuff but i uh, still really good super excited when this came up for sale and i was able to get it medium price of 307 this is interesting high end 315 low end of 300 very tight a 17 dollar difference in there <laughs> again I, you know condition is very similar to everything you know you uh I, I bet if someone found one in just really pristine then that price would really jump up if someone's going to 
buy it. Again, this isn't as hard sought as other Ricky Illiganga uh, albums, but it's it's still great to have. So my number five is another one that I talked about last week in Michigan, and that is the uh, John Drendel and B.A. Thrower, Papa Never Let Me Sing the Blues. Yeah. Very sparse Michigan uh, folk blues. 1974, uh, Deacon Productions is the uh, the label on that. Uh, eh, the range is over here. Median price, is, and this is an even 400, high end of 700, and low of 290s. But uh, again, we talked about that that Michigan stuff. And I've got another couple of Michigan ones coming up that are going to blow your mind here. But number five is that uh, BA Thrower Blues, but fun stuff. Very nice. And a, a decent uh, holding it value, holding its value. Yeah. yeah. You know, a lot of my most valuable records are actually box sets. You know, a lot of them really shoot up in price on there. But uh, number four is the Descendants Milo Goes oh, yep. to College that I bought at a record store for a price that. I could not refuse. Uh, so it was really, really, they just wanted to move it. And I was more than happy to be the person to do that for them. Uh, just classic punk rock album, the eighties. One of those, if you read must have punk albums, this is the one they, one of the ones they say you gotta have. So who am I to argue with them? Uh, medium price of three fifteen on there. Goes to a high end of 641 and a low end of 80. And and this is a marvelous, nice copy of this. I am so I was super excited to be able to get this into the collection. I did have a reissue because I figured I'd never see this. And then I'm at the record show, and there's two of them. Wow. You just never know. Even the reissue of that is topping around $50 lately. No. And I've got a reissue copy. Okay, so my number four, I've held this one close to the chest. I don't show it off a lot because I worked hard to get this, but it's another Michigan artist, uh, the late Jem Targill and his solo album, Lucky Guy. Jem Targill was um, a driving force of the Third Power, a great Michigan uh, acid rock band in the late 60s and early 70s. I interviewed Jem when we did some stuff on our YouTube channel. We did interviews um, several years back, you know, pre-pandemic or during the pandemic. And after talking to him, he's, he was, he passed away a couple of years ago. Such a fantastic individual, very upbeat, very happy about everything he did. Um, and, you know, I've got the third Power albums. And so I really, really worked hard. And it was <laughs> not, an easy, not an easy one to get. But yeah. uh, Jem Targill's Lucky Guy, 1978. Um, median price on this comes in at 449 the high fifty dollars more at five hundred, the low end at four hundred. So yeah, just about a hundred dollars um, going back and forth on these. Jim, again, if you get a chance, back up on our YouTube channel. Look for that interview with him. He's such a great guy, and it was so sad when he passed away. I think probably about three years ago now. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, just a couple brief ones before I really get to number three. These these would have been in there, but I, I, I still have the original vinyl, just trying to find a cover uh, in, in utero. There's the original vinyl on that, which is wow. really cool original, you know. Uh, I found this. I found the original in uh, West Virginia, of all places. Uh, so maybe someday I'll find that. And then uh, someone already showed this one, but there was a big star and uh, my original on that. Yep. Um, so, yeah, it would be this, this one, this, this one hurt. <laughs> I lost that color. Yeah, well, actually, they both did. That means like, oh, well, what are you going to do? So my number three, um, I already showed it, MacArthur. And so there okay. we go. Uh, bought it Radio Wasteland Records. So, yep, uh, yep. yeah. Years back that. Uh huh. Exactly right. So, no need to talk about that. We know all about it. Number three for me, a recent one, and you just showed Nirvana. I kept this first pressing of Nirvana not too long ago. It's a radio yeah. station copy, not necessarily a promotional copy, but a radio station copy. But uh, still, Obviously, marked up like this, it's it's tremendously devalued. But we take a big jump in the medians, starting at my number three. The median price on this, unmarked, if it's nice, $730, a low end of $60, and the high end of $1,700, if you get a first pressing, uh, never mind, from Nirvana. So again, this copy, a little worse for wear, 
nowhere near what that 700 median even i would probably put this in that two to three hundred dollar range but again i'm going to keep it because it's it is what it is it's the radio not necessarily promo but that's my number three yeah, and you know what's interesting? So you know, so then there, you know, the, that album in in utero that I just has a medium of three fifty, a high of five ninety nine, and a low of eighty three. It goes mm-hmm. to show the importance of that particular album. You would have yep. thought there would have been less vinyl prints on in utero because it came later, but that's the album. Mm-hmm. At number two, bought at my used to be local radio wasteland the misfits and i passed on one earlier but this is um, a first press and yeah i i didn't have any misfits it wasn't like a group that i was you know go oh my god i have to get something but when this came up i know the importance of this album and that it is you know a very good album and so I, I I jumped at it. I thought, okay, nah, this 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 would be cool to have to have in the collection, and um, I have no disappointment from it. This is excellent, and this had a medium of four fifty, a high end of one thousand twenty nine, and a low of seventy five. So uh, and again, there's a, a later versions. The color changes up here. So um, yeah, this is kind of the one to have. One of those tough ones to nail down. Okay, number two for me. Now this is we we've talked about this one before on the podcast, and this is one of those ones that switches dramatically when you look at the high the high value versus the median value, and that is my copy of the Rolling Stones special radio promotion limited edition not for sale sampler we i think we talked about this last week as well yeah. not too far back um very rare radio station issue written on ripped i don't dare take it out of the plastic very often because the the edges are just completely frayed the vinyl is nice and scratchy and noisy so nowhere near its median value of 743 dollars nice. now if i switch and i look at my high dollar ones the high values this is number one High end on this twenty eight hundred dollars is what that sold for, and the low end is two hundred and fifty. So even even beat up like that, this is still in the you know healthy triple digits, the two hundred dollar range. But again, just the rarity of something like this is where that goes. But to yeah. see this jump up to eighteen, but switching to median makes it a little more realistic. I don't know what that eighteen hundred dollar one sold for. <laughs> but, uh, I'm sorry, twenty eight hundred dollar, yeah, twenty eight hundred dollar. Yeah, I don't know what kind of condition that was in, but it has to be there. Uh, okay, of, drum roll, price drum of roll, please. And got it. Yeah. All right, number one, which no surprise, it's going to be Zamrock. Uh, <laughs> this to me is one of the the greatest of all the Zamrock albums. Again, it's Ricky Il- Iliganga, uh, Zambia. It's um, his first one, I believe, and uh, pretty good condition considering. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's some tape on there. Uh, overall, it plays, and uh, no, it's, it's this. This isn't too bad. Uh, you know, and they've 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 reissued this, so I do have the reissue, so I can hear it nicely without, you know, snap, crackle, pop. But uh, just a incredible good guitar work on this, and it, it rocks. It rocks so darn hard. Uh, medium price is five sixty eight. High 875 and low is 350. So even at the low, very difficult yep. album to get. So so onward now to my number one in the median price range. Should not be a surprise at all, Steve, if you've kind of been watching what we've been doing the past couple of weeks as well. And that is the MacArthur one. We talked about this last week in the Michigan stuff. And in the when I when I resort discogs to the high price. This comes in at number two behind the Rolling Stones I just showed. When I resort to low, it stays at number one, and you'll see why here in a second. Uh, the median price on this, getting my number one spot, is $1,837, $1,837. The high end is $1,875, and the low is $1,800. Now, it's... You can average that out. That average is there were three sales showing yeah. in this guy. So those were the three sales sure. all in that $1,800 range. And so that's why this one at all three sortings comes out at or near the top. 
And were it not for that, uh, you know, the twenty five or the you know the, the twenty five hundred dollar stones, for whatever reason that was selling, this would be number one across the board. But um, that shows that regardless of, I mean, maybe all three that were sold were in decent condition, but there has not been one that sold under eighteen hundred dollars on Discogs. And I did not check eBay or or Pop Psych to see where it's flying around on there, but very uh, very rare, very sought after. We're going to hold yeah. that one tight to the exactly. chest here. So, well, you know, it, it just goes to show that, you know, the power, you know, what we as consumers buy it at sets that Discogs price. And yep. I, and, and, and so, you know, you, we, we, we can, you know, bitch all, all we want about the prices on some of these going up. That's because somebody's buying them for that. Yep. And so prices 100% set not by the record store on those. I mean, the sellers are setting a price, but if someone's going to buy it, ta-da, hey, well, bravo, you sold it. And, uh, you know, if if people don't buy at those high prices, then that Discogs average does not creep up. And eventually the seller, you know, depending upon what they've got into it, will say, well, maybe I better not sell this for $3,000. Yeah. I'll knock this down to two. I'll knock it down to 800 and then all of a sudden it sells. So a high price that you're seeing and the, hey, this is for sale thing may not be representative. Do your research, check out what the previous ones had sold for, compare that against the, the, the conditions of the ones that have sold. Look at that trend to see where they're going and that will help you tremendously. And if you're just a collector trying to see what is the value of my collection for insurances or bragging rights or whatever, Consider that median price range is probably the 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 go to as far as what is more realistic. Yeah, and you know, Jim, you like you know like something. You know, it is. It's you know, if you say you got a medium of eight under it, but that again is that medium price. So if someone bought one for an extremely high amount, yep, the medium price starts moving it up. Also, uh, yeah, <laughs> just because one album uh, can do yep. that, or like your McCartney, only three have sold. Yep. So I mean, it's just, you know what? It's 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 there. I mean, but it's 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 exciting. I think as collectors, this is what we like to look at. I, I've talked to some guys; they they could care less about price, and that's great. You know what? They just want the music. Doesn't yep. matter, and that's that is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I kind of like to look at things, and uh, you know, I like numbers. So for me, it's like, oh, this is neat. Well, very cool. So. Look at your collections. If you use Discogs, and uh, hopefully you do, because it is still a good tool, love them or hate them, and what they do, it's a it's a good tool to track, and it's fun to look at, see what you've got. And yes, I'll admit too, it's fun to look at that high number once in a while, isn't it? And go, yeah, yeah, got a lot, but it's All not right. that, not that real. But yeah, let us know what you think. Uh, do you have a preferred method of sorting your Discogs database, and does that give you bragging rights? Check us out, though, online. Two guys talking about records. You can look for our Facebook page. Uh, feel free to leave a comment on that. I think you can comment on uh, Spotify as well as YouTube. But other than that, Steve, I think that's about all we've got this week. Yep. Now now, and everyone's going, so what's their address? Wow, yeah. What's that record at? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, until then, I'm going to reside middle of the road. That's that's where you're <laughs> Okay. <find> <laughs> Steve, have a great week. Don't uh, don't get too buried in the pool business this week in, uh, in the hot temps. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Thanks, Jim. And hopefully you have a busy week. So, yep. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you, as always, to everyone who's watching. Yep. Thank you, everyone. Bye.